is working behind the scenes with the opposition leader Raila Dinga to ensure that the Kenya Kwanzaa government is put to account. Our senior political affairs reporter Chris Dairo reports. In the run-up to the 2022 general election, President William Ruto and his predecessor, retired President Uru Kenyatta, did not see eye to eye. Na mimi nataka ni mwambie rais, wacha kuniletea maneno my friend. Wewe sukuma candidate yako bwana kitendawili. Unaniongelea nini? Sijui kama tunaelewana. Mr. President, please stop talking about me. Umenitusi miaka karibu miaka 3 kuna mtu amewaguza. Hiyo miaka mitatu zinimekuwa kwa kiti. Sindilikuwa na uwezo. Sasa wakati naenda kupatiana serikali na sina uwezo ndio niko na, na, na time ya kukutafuta. The relationship between the two strained so much that the images of the two in shirts and neck ties of the same color and spending most of their working time together as president and deputy almost completely erased. There are people who talk a lot about what they will do and do nothing. And those are many. But there are people who will talk very little, but do a lot, and their deeds are seen. Even if they sponsor demonstrations so that they don't pay tax, I want to promise them they will pay tax. No more exemption. Najua mtu ambaye ana kitu ingine ya kufanya lazima apige mdomo. Wacha wapige mdomo. Hiyo ni dunia. Sisi tunaendelea na yetu. Asante sana mweshimi wa rais. But even after the smooth transition that saw retired President Uru Kenyatta hand over peacefully, the political animosity between the two leaders seemed to have spilled over to the current regime. So vicious is the fight that Ruto's deputy Riga the Gashagwa has been fully inducted. Mimi, yule jamaa ya kwetu, haki ya mungu alikuwa menipangia vipaya. Alikuwa menipanga kunifunga mwaka musini ni kufia jela. Nyinyi diyo mulio niyokoa. Nasema asanti. Nyinyi ndio mliniokoa. Si hata alikuwa amenyang'aja pesa yangu. Si nimerudishiwa juzi. What looks bad is the impression being created that he was targeting an individual or a particular family. That is not good. Because taxation and policies are not uh, meant for individuals. The Kenya Kwanza government eager to expose the rot in the previous regime that even moving further to question the cabinet secretaries who served in the Jubilee administration. These fellows who kept on shouting that they cannot hand over to thieves, that thieves will not be entertained in this country, those are the people who have stolen money belonging to the people of Kenya. However, in the country's political history, the transition between Jubilee government and Kenya Kwanza will go down in history as the first transition where the former government and the current one continue to be at coalition course. I'm inheriting a country which has been badly ravaged by years of misrule and ineptitude. There has been there has been a wide disconnect between the people and government. In 2002, despite numerous complaints against the Kanu regime, the NAC government completely delinked itself from anyone who served in the government they inherited and did not pursue them. The same case happened in 2013 when retired President Uru Kenyatta took over the reins of power from the late third President Mwaki Baki. But with the current regime, it's a different story. <laughs> Wakasema mimi ni mujeuri. Nikasema tulikuta store akuda chochote. Hata panya ametoroka akuda kitu ya kukula. Hii inchi tumeanza upya. We have started from scratch. We found a broke country with nothing. The little that was remaining waliiba siku za mwisho. Already the hunt is on. Some former cabinet secretaries, their fate might finally be determined by the courts. Retired President Uru Kenyatta is already on record that he does not recognize the Kenya Kwanzaa government. 
And this is just the beginning. Chris Tero, KTN News, Nairobi. The country lost over 200 billion shillings ahead of last year's elections due to illegal tax waivers, abandonments and exemptions to individuals and companies of power and individuals connected to the state. Now, according to the Parliamentary Committee on Finance and National Planning, the Treasury and Kenya Revenue Authority are responsible for the losses. This came as the committee issued care.